So this is the current world record on all circuits, uh, new player, a category of uh, Midtown Madness 2 where you have to complete all 20 circuits, um, all 10 in London and all 10 in San Francisco. The strategy uh, for all circuits, new player, has recently changed. The original strategy, as performed by Niliki, was to use the Panos Roadster in all events. However, the Panos Roadster is actually a little bit slower than what you can accomplish using the uh, Ford Mustang Fastback in San Francisco. Uh, this is because the Panos Roadster um, has relatively poor acceleration uh, despite a high top speed and is extremely unstable and, and nerve-wracking to, uh, to drive. London has a lot more tracks where um, there's fewer elevation changes and where the high uh, where through you can utilize the high higher average speed of the Panos Roadster uh, the, the uh, higher uh, top speed rather um, now Niliki extensively tracked all of the times uh, for that you can accomplish using a Ford Mustang fastback and using a Panos Roadster and he found that uh, the Ford Mustang Fastback is good in, in San Francisco and up until Florida, where the Panos Roadster becomes a lot faster because you're you're flat out a lot of that course. And so um, instead of starting with London, uh, the strategy is now to start with San Francisco, use the Ford Mustang Fastback up until Florida, and then uh, use uh, the Panos Roadster for the remainder of the run. This was a very clear, uh, clean uh, take it easy. Uh, in gen general, you can do it flat out. Um, I do a little bit of a riskier strategy, especially since it's uh, the first map, by going to the inside of the pole. It saves like maybe a quarter of a second per per lap. Uh, this was not a gold time, despite it looking pretty clean, um, because on the final lap, I slid the tires on the third turn, the second to last corner, uh, and lost about 10 miles an hour of speed. It cost me couple tenths of a second and so that's why that wasn't a gold time but it was still better than um, my previous personal best now the Ford Mustang fastback really comes into its own on this track because you're actually able to accomplish it uh, without um, killing your car and needing to, to respawn uh, for those who don't know when you when you um, when your damage meter gets all the way to red um, and, and then you crash a little bit further um, you, you're forced to um, wait five seconds while the car respawns. So a key strategy to ensuring that you're actually able to uh, do a, a no-kill run on, uh, on hang time is to break right before the, uh, the, the first jump there, and that's to make sure that you have enough speed to uh, to ensure that you make the second jump without a huge curb hit uh, at the very bottom of the hill there. And so you slow down to around 90 to 95 miles an hour uh, and that limits the damage that you have because instead of um, nosing down straight onto the ground you're you're simply going from one surface to another surface and you uh, you're able to carry more speed that way. So there's a there's an example of the braking right there. Uh, and um, if, you, if you're if you not going above around 110, maybe a little bit more than that, then you won't make the uh, the second jump, and so that can get you into trouble. You can get some nasty bounces on that last one. Um, another big strategy of hang time is that you want to make sure that when you're going up the hill, uh, uh, after the second corner on the track that you're carrying as much speed as possible and so you want to do that by making sure uh, that you miss all the poles and obstacles that are lying on the side of the road and a, a good run up the hill um, means that you're averaging around 90 miles an hour or so. Uh, Gimme Soma is a nice uh, simple almost completely flat out track so you'll notice I, I'm hitting two barriers there instead of just plowing through one the only reason I do that is to just get the barriers out of the way. There's a slight time deficit, just like super marginal, not really important for um, for for a long um, run such as all circuits where you're going to be spending 
like 45 minutes or so on, on the map in general but basically it just it makes sure that the barriers are out of the way so that the car doesn't start tripping up on the barriers because that can lead to uh, uh, getting the car stuck or causing you to lose control or, or hit a wall which can be a, a much um, worse uh, time impact. So you'll notice I, I break uh, down to around 110, 115 miles an hour. That's that's it might be possible to go even faster through there, but it's simply a comfort level um, thing for me. Just gives you a little bit more time to react on the other side and line yourself up for the the left right um, uh, part of the uh, the lap there. So again, a pretty solid run there. That was a, a gold split. Um, small margins, half a second, but on a track where you're mostly flat out, that's I feel like that's pretty typical. Wind It Up um, is a very difficult course. Uh, it's probably one of the hardest individual levels to run just because uh, there's a lot of obstacles. Uh, it's a pretty low average speed track. Um, when you're coming up the hill here, you want to make sure you stay off um, the wall uh, and also make sure you stay off the grass the, the grass where it's a little bit bumpy. You can lose some speed and, and, and lose control on that portion as well. So I hit some poles there, which um, not super ideal in terms of uh, a single lap run, but it did make things easier for the remaining two laps. And overall, this, this winded up was... Uh, uh, fairly solid for me. I got pretty lucky on lap one because at the top of the hill uh, I came very close to uh, smashing into the wall, but I, I, it didn't end up happening. Here, slightly unfortunate, um, the the, uh, the tram um, kind of seems to cover two di different potential routes and um, for one of them at the in lap two you uh, it can uh, be there at the, at the top of the hill uh, and I didn't get quite over enough to the left or right and, uh, and hit it there, but didn't get stuck on it, so not, not a huge um, a time disadvantage there. Now, I, I was also kind of fortunate because one of the AI cars got stuck. You'll see it on the right-hand side of the map there. It's kind of stuck up against uh, the building there. It's a red uh, Cadillac. I uh, can't remember the model. Eldorado. Um, uh, normally you'd have to deal with that a lapping that car on the third lap but because he got stuck did not have to worry about him and got a huge huge gold split um, many seconds saved from my uh, previous personal best and at this point I'm, I'm 10.7 seconds up things are looking very good I've done I've just done three gold splits in a row um, so this this next track is uh, Midtown Mayhem it's 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 one of my favorite tracks uh, of certainly of the the all circuit um, set of races. It, it's got a lot of flow to it. Um, it's a lot of um, right and left 90 degree corners, but there's some good elevation change. The uh, and the uh, the width of the road increases and decreases. So I, I slipped up there a little bit. I, I got two close to the edge of grip and uh, lost the, the back end into that corner. Not a huge time loss overall, lost the back end a tiny bit there as well. It's always the elevation changes, even with uh, a more stable car like the uh, Ford Mustang Fastback, it's it's still uh, you know a difficult thing to, to, to deal with sometimes. Um, the bottom corner at the bottom of the hill there is quite sharp and so uh, I had a very good run through it there carrying around 110 miles an hour without um, losing uh, losing traction. Uh, luckily the AI also take took off a, uh, a, a thick pole that lies to the inside of that corner. If you hit that uh, it can it can cost you some uh, some major speed and and time. But overall this is a very good lap. Uh, I tend to really dive it hard to the inside there to try and um, carry as much momentum down the hill uh, as I can there. And so, uh, yeah, a 49.50 lap is very good. A little bit of a rough start to the lap there. Hit some poles. Not too big of a deal. So, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think keeping it on the road at the top of the hill going down that the previous hill that we did instead of 
launching the car onto the grass like you would in a, in a paneled GTR one uh, is the better strategy with this just sim simply because you're you're it's a shorter distance so here uh, not the best angle through the corner I you know I, I ended up having to cover a lot more distance um, turning the car and preparing it for the next set of corners but no issues with the tram that can happen if you're just a couple of seconds slower than I am uh, in this run you'll notice that I end a lot of the runs like this by uh, kind of spinning the car into uh, into the finish line and that's because um, I'm just trying to get enough turning angle on it so that I can let go of my uh, PS4 controller that I'm using to uh, to do the run and get on the keyboard in order to, to have an, an efficient uh, hit, hit the escape key twice uh, down arrow once and, and, and get into the next race by hitting enter and so because because I have both hands on the controller I usually uh, I flick it in to try and get one hand on the keyboard to, to start the process, speed things up a little bit. Chinatown's pretty simple, so I take it probably a little bit more conservatively than you'd think, and that's because those that pole on the left there at the bottom of the hill, um, you can really get stuck on it. I've had I've had runs where I've lost five to ten seconds on on Chinatown from just interacting with those poles in a strange way. Um, also. Scrubbing off a little bit more speed allows you to um, to hit the hill uh, before hitting the ground, and so if you dove straight from the top of the hill onto the ground, you can end up with a kind of a nasty bounce that can uh, end up with you out of shape and, and scrubbing off uh, speed or ending up on barriers, that sort of thing, and so that can cost you some time. So it, it, it's just a little bit of insurance. Uh, it's not. Uh, for for an individual level record, which you wouldn't do with a, a pan, uh, sorry a Ford Mustang fastback anyways, uh, you wouldn't do that. You'd want to you know the, the keep as much speed as possible. But uh, in that one, uh, it, it's most important and most consistent to uh, to do what I did there. So Presidio is an interesting one. You always want to go to the right hand side of the blue car. Um, I tried going to the left hand side, but the uh, there's some interactions with the. Uh, I believe it's the white Ford Mustang Fastback AI car that can be a little funky if you do that sometimes. So a little bit of time loss there, a little bit out of uh, out of shape and ended up on the barriers. Once you get on a set of barriers like that, it's very hard to get off of them. And it can, uh, it can mess up uh, your ability to turn as well. So overall, a tiny bit of time loss there, but not, nothing uh, really significant. As well there, I've cleared away a couple of poles that will make things a little bit easier in um, the, the coming laps. Um, ideally, you wouldn't want to hit those poles at all, but you try doing that for three consecutive laps, it's uh, not the uh, easiest process. So, ooh, a little bit of a bad bounce there I had. A little bit out of whack, had to, uh, you know, get out of the throttle a little bit there to make sure I get the checkpoint. Uh, Presidio's uh, a, a very difficult uh, track in terms of consistency with any car, be that the uh, GTR1 in an all races run or in an all circuits, um, you know, modified race settings, or uh, or this um, with the uh, Ford Mustang Fastback. But overall, uh, pretty solid lap two, 37 seconds. So uh, you generally want to stay right so that you don't get as big of a bounce as I did there. That can really unstabilize you. You can spin. Uh, occasionally or or you can get a very bad setup for the next checkpoint you don't want to have to turn around here or end up spinning on the grass because uh, uh, it, it's very hard to get the car back going once you're uh, you're spun around and you'll lose you'll find yourself losing e an easy 10 seconds if you if you uh, have a big mistake there so lost seven tenths of a second on uh, my previous PB there um, but overall a pretty solid run so uh, square dancing is the the next track. This one's uh, you're playing a little bit of Russian roulette with um, with the jumps and and uh, and different angles here. So in general, you want to stay right because uh, if you stay left, you you can get some bad bounces like that. It also doesn't allow you to turn to miss the pole. Uh, in addition, if you um, 
if you jump too far forward and your car's suspension is still down when you get to the curb it can stop you in your tracks which of course is a, a huge huge speed loss so you want to avoid that a little scruffy there hit a pole hit, hit a tree but not too too bad again i'm not as far over to the right as I should be, and there's exactly the uh, the curb thing that I was talking about. I also got stuck on the pole that I hit over last lap, which was kind of unfortunate. So not the this was not my best um, square dancing. Ideally, you want to be completing it uh, in a, a, as close to a minute 30 as possible. I think maybe even a sub 130 might be possible with uh, the Ford Mustang fastback, but. Obviously not possible here. I'd brake a little bit because uh, I, I could see that I was going to have a collision with uh, the Audi TT. So there's an example of a very good, uh, of going off to the right. Um, the car seems to drop out of the the air a little bit faster, which uh, gets you back on the ground and, and, uh, and, and gets tire contact with the ground. And you have more ability to turn and, uh, and get your way. Uh, through the circuit. So this next track is the very last one that um, you do with the Ford Mustang Fastback in the current strategy. It's Circuit Breaker. This one uh, can be a little bit of a pain. Very technical, uh, pretty narrow, lots and lots of obstacles along the way, and pretty strong AI as well. So you want to get to the inside of the Audi TTs there. I got stuck on the barriers a little bit and uh, and hit the curb, which cost me a little bit of speed. But overall, this was my best ever run, really, through, um, through the first set of corners there, because I was able to get by the Panos Roadsters. Um, the Panos Roadsters hit the inside curbing on on the turn at the top of the hill there and I've had multiple times where the curbing that they throw onto the racetrack has um, messed with my ability to, do, to steer and I've gone head on into the wall and that's a huge huge time loss because especially since you're kind of you're going up a hill uh, it, it can easily cost you uh, five to ten seconds uh, simply right there I break a little bit there that's just again simply to maintain stability um, by giving uh, the car the ability to transition between the two um, the, the the elevated um, sorry the uh, the downhill and the uh, the flat surface again instead of jumping from one surface to the other getting a bad uh, having the potential for a bad bounce or some speed loss Ooh, I got I got pretty fortunate there with that it's possible to uh, actually roll your car on that set of bumps there I hit the the uh, pole on the inside there, which was not quite optimal, but overall, uh, pretty solid um, run through the first few corners on this uh, lap two. And so coming down the hill, you want to uh, cut over to the left as soon as possible, uh, and kind of give yourself a little bit of an ability to uh, to arc your way through the corners. You want to use as much of the racetrack, well, the uh, the streets, I guess, as possible. A little bit of a scruffy run up the hill, hit a tree, got loose and lost some speed, but overall, not too shabby. Good run through this set of corners, nearly hit a pole there. Um, and just simply uh, a nice wide arc to make sure you get it through the last corner with as much speed as possible and a very solid uh, circuit breaker. Uh, I think I'm surprised it wasn't my fastest ever, to be honest. Um, but certainly a, a very big green split and so there's uh, a changeover to the Panos Roadster for uh, Floret, which is the final uh, San Francisco circuit race. So you obviously lose a couple of seconds. It's unfortunate um, that you know you you uh, you can't wait to change cars until uh, you're done San Francisco because you'll need to go back to the menu anyways. Um, so you lose a couple of seconds due to that, but uh, because of how fast this course is, um, you, you want to have a, a fast car. So I tried to. <laughs> I was trying to make do a less risky strat than going through the set of barriers there by uh, getting over there, but I just hit a pole and that undestabilized the car enough to uh, spin the car, and I'd ha I have to pretty much start out from from a dead stop there. So good amount of time lost there, kind of unfortunate. So 
So here I'm just trying to minimize the number of bumps that the car has. You want to make sure you avoid the curbs because um, similar to the Mustang in square dancing, if you uh, come down and your suspension still compressed and you hit a curb, you're going to come to a stop or you're going to get spun out. Um, I slow down a lot there because with the downhill transition and when you're trying to uh, to turn, it's a you know it's a big trouble point for the Panos Roadster. Um, you don't want to lose traction. Um, overall, mediocre lap one. Uh, I've had 121s and I, I think ideally a, a sub 120 lap one is, is possible. That's the thing with the panels roadster is that uh, in general, the 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 potential the uh, that it has is much greater than you're kind of ever realistically going to chain together in an all circuits run. A little bit rough, kind of had some close calls coming up the hill, scrubbed off some speed. Did actually go through the barriers on that one, but it went okay. Hit the pole there, uh, kind of unfortunate. Scrubbed off a lot of, a lot more speed but allowed me lots of stability uh, heading into this final sections of the course. You, you saw, I think, maybe last lap that I was uh, struggling for grip coming onto, uh, onto that section. So, overall that was okay. Got pretty lucky there. Uh, the car shot off to the right when I, uh, when I hit the ground because I was turning and I almost hit the big pole on the inside, which likely would have cost me a lot of time. So I lost six seconds to uh, my PB there just due to all the mistakes. A little bit of a inefficient um, menuing, I would say there. Uh, you'll see you don't really lose or gain a whole lot of time on mini race. I, I turn off to the left there to make sure I don't hit uh, the mini Cooper. But um, you'll see once I get through uh, this stint that I, I, I believe I lost a couple of seconds to... Uh, inefficient menuing. I have uh, trouble sometimes because the mouse gets locked to the right hand side of the screen. I also got kind of unlucky by hitting a pole there uh, that I think one of the minis must have dropped and <laughs> and left in uh, in my way conveniently. Thank you uh, minis. So round Westminster is a track that's very close to flat out uh, if you can do it optimally. You should only really have to break once and that's for turn one on the second lap. That corner is a little scary because uh, you're, you're never quite sure how the panels is going to react to uh, to a corner especially when you have the potential of, uh, of getting onto the grass there. But pretty simple. You just want to uh, Take it easy. It's very, it's hard to be precise, and so you see me lose a little bit of control there, um, just trying to work the steering on the panels roadster. You have to be so, so careful um, because it's, it's so sensitive and reactive. So there, I was trying to ensure that I didn't lose grip on the grass, but ended up out wide and hit a pole. And so, uh, as a result uh, of going. Uh, Instead of carrying 150 miles an hour through the corner, I was at 80, uh, and so I'm going to lose uh, a good amount of time uh, in this one. Really disappointing um, to me because it's it's not exactly a difficult it's map. Uh, so that was almost four seconds uh, just from that. View from two bridges is my arch nemesis. Uh, it, it it was in my. Uh, previous runs and it, and it certainly was in uh, this run as well and that's because anything with jumps with the panels especially those bridges is um, always a little again we're kind of playing Russian roulette with how the panels is going to react upon landing or a pan uh, uh, sorry upon hitting a big elevation change So overall, it's a little bit difficult, especially through that last corner, because you're going over multiple curbs at once to uh, and uh, have the potential of hitting different obstacles like cones or poles um, to to be stable. But overall, pretty good run. Um, that was an interesting. So 
showcasing some of the interesting reactions of the panels the panels roadster to hitting things weird barrier hit there of course through here try to break to scrub things off almost end up in the sea hitting the pole there but overall pretty quick turnaround um, it will almost be deja vu next lap as you'll see it's possible to cut that uh, pole to the inside but I uh, was slightly conservative there and went to the outside because if you knock that pole over you can also get stuck on it the second lap which is just lovely um, and through the first lap it's a 127 obviously uh, you know there's a few seconds to be gained there uh, I've gotten very unlucky with this bridge in certain certain PBs where I've had like the car more or less almost warp into the ground and I've come to a dead stop um, there but uh, overall that went well um, that time Was fortunate for to not have that cone mess me up at all. A curb there threw me further to the outside than I was expecting, but it ended up being okay. Trying to break a little bit, lost traction there, and so kind of compromised my line for the next uh, couple corners. Over the bridge, unfortunately, the later you go, the, the the better it is. But the car nose down there, and so I lost a good amount of time needing to turn around and then having to deal with going running through those barriers, which was uh, quite irritating. And I think I was just a little flustered from the uh, the last incident because that's embarrassing, um, hitting the inside wall there, Levi. Also, oh, okay, I didn't, I thought I might have hit some cars there, must have been in another run. Uh, and believe it or not, I still gained almost two and a half seconds on my personal PB with a very scruffy run that you could probably save, uh, you know, a combined uh, eight, I'll say eight to ten seconds with, uh, with a good run. Parks with no par sorry parks but no parking is an interesting one. You can carry a lot of speed through the whole course. It's pretty flowing um, if you can uh, get it right. But with the roadster, it's always a little bit spicier than you'd uh, than you'd want it to. So very very high speed. This is a you know a big time gain over the Mustang. Uh, almost lost. Uh, control there, clipped uh, the inside of the finish point and, and kept going. Again, almost lost uh, traction on the grass. Trying my best to avoid those barriers on the ground because those can trip you up. But overall, solid run so far. Tried to go to uh, the right of the barrier there, and I just barely missed by probably a few frames, sorry, a few pixels, the uh, the checkpoint there, sort of the finishing uh, block there. So I had to turn around and go back. That's a big time loss because I would have been carrying 100 miles an hour or greater, probably a lot more than that, through there and going the right direction, but instead I had to double back on myself and start from effectively zero. However, it did make navigating traffic a little bit easier. It's always, it can sometimes be a little bit uh, more exciting than you'd want on this one. And smooth sailing to the finish. I certainly made sure I was further over to the left for that last lap, but lost five, uh, five to five and a half seconds to my PB there. And at this point, despite my very good uh, run through San Francisco, especially with the Ford Mustang, gaining a number of seconds. I've I've lost it all more or less back um, to my PB, which is kind of infuriating. Um, but uh, overall, the the uh, there's some points uh, with uh, where there's a lot of time to gain or lose still to go. So I've kept going, which was fortunate, uh, given that this was uh, you know the the world record run. 
um, and my new PB. So a good first lap. You want to just uh, use as much of the track as possible to keep as much speed uh, as possible. With the GTR1, you want to, uh, it's technically shorter to use the, the shortcut there, but um, I elected to do the more conservative route to just keep more speed and not have to worry about uh, turning to, to make the different checkpoints there. Got pretty fortunate with that uh, Mini Cooper interaction there, that there was no uh, further issues. It's definitely possible to carry more speed through that corner than I do, but with uh, you going over curbs, it's, you can never really be too careful. And smooth and steady to the finish. Now, I was very surprised that this wasn't uh, a gold split for me. It's, it was either very close or there's a potential that I, I might have had a, a parks but no parking before where the auto splitter didn't work. And so I ended up um, maybe hitting, um, hitting next split on parks and no parking well into City Circuit. And so, uh, well, a couple of seconds into City Circuit and as a result... Um, the, the times might be skewed and it might be really impossible to to get a gold split on City Circuit. But anyways, uh, going on to Underground here, um, it's a map where you, you can surprisingly gain or lose a surprising amount because there's barriers you have to go over there and um, it's always a question as to whether or not the Panels Roadster will remain uh, gripped up through there. And then you, you want to back it into the wall to kind of bounce you back the other way once you collect the checkpoint. Didn't quite do it there, lost a, a tiny bit of time uh, as a result. I'd say a good lap is probably around the 24 second range. Let's see if I get a good bounce on this one. So that was... Uh, not a good bounce because I hit a pole and it actually turned me around before I even got to the checkpoint. Pretty much brought me to a, a dead stop. Still got a 26.30, which was faster than the second lap, impressively. Um, that, that's one that can really go either way and not one you can kind of rely on consistently for, uh, for a good run. Speaking of run, on to London Run, the next track. I've had some goofy interactions with um, with that bridge before, uh, especially on the first lap. I've had it sometimes bring me to a complete stop. So, uh, like a lot of things with the the Panos Roadster, Russian roulette, um, in terms of uh, how things are going to go. I carry now this this strategy is kind of different than the one you do with the GTR1 because the GTR1 is allergic to curbs and uh, it would not allow you to do that but I carry more speed through there take a wider line uh, through the grass it does give you a little bit more potential to crash the roadster because of how unstable it is on the grass um, but I clip the curbs there and uh, the car would not turn into the corner and so I hit the wall on the entrance to that last corner which cost me some time. Uh, I've had a lot of runs killed there on the second lap because that bridge is always up when you're coming through on the second lap and if you hit it and it takes you off to the left or the right you're in the uh, in the Thames River and you your run is over. But got fortunate there. Uh, there are of course ways to uh, like minimize your risk and that's you know breaking um, to ensure that uh, to give yourself more potential of controlling the car if it's out of shape. Uh, it, it also allows you to avoid any uh, incidents that you can have with the, the car nosing down into the uh, on the on landing and, uh, and various spinning out or, or flipping that can occur uh, as a result. Bridge is down third lap, which is just glorious. And uh, after that, it's just simply, you know, maintaining the speed that you have as much as you can. 
that was nice and sharp onto the grass so I didn't I took I kept as almost as much speed as I would going out wider but I've minimized my path as well which uh, led to a very good lap here I believe this lap was sub 50 which was very nice Clipped the tree there, which actually helped me get turned. Got a little bit out of shape, but you can use the handbrake to kind of uh, get your car back into a straight line. It costs you a tiny bit of speed, but gives you back control, and you can quickly come out of the incident unscathed. So I gained a second there uh, on my PB, and that was a gold split. So I, 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 I guess that my previous PB was probably my previous gold split on uh, London Run but I think there's a few more seconds that you can get. Give me some royalties. Lap 1 is always, uh, you know, the tale of going through barriers. Got kind of unlucky with the barrier interactions there. Kind of rid it like a... Uh, rode them like a, a surfboard there uh, through the last couple of corners, but that's all done and taken care of. Through that one, I am all out of shape, which is unfortunate because that's not the line that you want to open up there th for the next couple of laps and so uh, it means that on lap two I'm gonna be uh, going through barriers and, and and sacrificing a little bit of lap time as a result. So that corner is completely fine in the Panos GTR1 or the Mustang but it's so so scary with the Roadster because you you go to turn in and you're usually still on the grass and so uh, you're never quite sure whether you're about to spin out or not and with how narrow that road is you don't want to be out of shape going onto it. Overall not too too bad though a 10988 a Mustang you can do pretty with a Mustang you can do pretty much uh, the same as a Roadster on this one um, but that's just that's just how it goes. You don't want to switch cars because the Mustang wouldn't consistently be a whole lot faster than what you can do with the Roadster. Overall, good lap to run through the track. You just want to make sure you're not hitting any poles through here. The Roadster is particularly light and uh, doesn't have really the, uh, a good amount of grunt to get you through the poles and keep momentum. Definitely want to be careful of lap cars through here. As you'll see here when I tried, thought I would be cutting in on the Aston Martin, but he decided to take that racing line away from me and I went for a nice little flip. Here I had a very close call. I, I was very fortunate. I've, ha I've had AI cars completely wait me off the map on, uh, on that corner before. So to get away with uh, the Mustang uh, having the issues instead of me on there was quite lucky. Lost a few seconds due to uh, the speed lost from the flip. Um, but uh, and, and lost a couple of seconds, so with only two tracks to go, I'm somehow just a single second in front of my PB after everything that had happened. But Soho Mojo is uh, and Zany Zigzag are ones uh, where you can gain or lose a lot of time. They're the the longest, some of the longer. Uh, circuits and some of the more technical ones, especially Soho Mojo. This one's so so technical, and it's, you, you want to carry as so uh, like as much speed as you can through it. Feels like everywhere is out to get you on this one. You actually so with the uh, GTR one, you want to slam into that wall, and you can kind of carry that momentum through with the Roadster. That is not something you want to do because you can kind of get yourself Austin Powers in the tunnel or lose a lot of momentum or uh, end up sideways up against the wall. Overall, not the not the perfect first lap, but a solid 104 um, to start, which was nice. 
hit a pole there. That'll make things a little easier next lap. Again, it's it'd be better if I didn't hit any poles at all, but uh, getting them out of the way is at least convenient for future laps. And it's so, so hard to miss them all three times. You go through the track. Little bit offline there, uh, and uh, and clipped some objects there, but got pretty fortunate to not have any major issues. You want to make sure you don't turn in too early for that corner because the curb can actually make you grip up more than you're expecting and then you can hit the wall. So whereas you with the GTR1 you'll be you know hitting kind of every wall that you see to carry as much momentum through with the roadster it's the exact opposite. You want to avoid walls like the plague. pretty convenient spots to uh, pass those uh, lap cars though and catching them through here but then immediately having them go off to the left and taking the shortcut was very very convenient uh, you if you go a little bit slower than that you don't want to interact with cars through that tunnel portion or uh, in, or in the middle of uh, sharp corners in the track Overall, a very nice um, last lap and pretty consistent with my second lap as well. Pretty much identical within six hundredths. And that is a big gain on my PB and a nice gold as well. So, uh, going, going on to Zany Zigzag, I have almost exactly five minutes to work with, which is very nice. I forgot that I you want to actually end up over to the right of the panels is almost ended up getting caught between them and that can result in you spinning out and, and losing time so I, I took a, a small L there uh, got on the brakes and then went around the outside of them this is a, a huge time save over the uh, over the Ford Mustang it's possible to save more than really 40 seconds I think uh, over the over the Mustang simply because your average speed on this is probably faster than the top speed of the Mustang. I got pretty fortunate with those barriers. It's possible to get caught on them and end up in the in the outside wall there. And by doing that, I've cleared myself a path to consistently take a shortcut uh, on the second and third laps. Otherwise, you'd be doing a much sharper corner, uh, and you'd be using. Um, you'd have to drive a further distance as well, so it's the the worst of both worlds by not cutting. This straight is very scary in the GTR1 because uh, you're worried about the car warping into the ground with the Roadster pretty much a breeze. Uh, the only stressful bit comes at the end where you want to punch through the barriers to get yourself a shortcut. Lost traction, but quickly regained it there, which was great. And a nice 141. Lap number one is quite nice. So in this corner, it might be faster to carry more speed out wide and then uh, and through the barriers and the grass and cut back in. But considering you need to make a pretty sharp corner and you, you might end up on the grass, it's safer to just break and, and use the road there. Um, also, it's a much shorter route, so I, I'll need to explore that more to see whether or not, um, you know, running out wide with and carrying more speed is is potentially worth it. But very consistent through lap two. You want to carry as much speed as possible through that, but you don't want to hit the poles on the outside because it'll affect your run all the way down the straightaway, uh, which can be quite painful.
hitting the top speed of the roadster there of around 177. I think it's possible to carry close to, closer to 140 miles an hour possibly through there, but oh, it's it's oh so scary. It just seems more worthwhile to break a little bit more than you than you feel is necessary and ensure that you're nice and safe going through there and not losing time due to a spin out or hitting a wall. In my previous PB, I, I choked the sub 45 at the last. Uh, on the last lap by crashing into the barrier trying to carry too much speed through that corner so uh, yeah you definitely want to be careful the other spot you want to be careful on this one is you don't want to start cutting off the barriers too early because you could potentially miss that checkpoint and that the turnaround instead of carrying 100 miles an hour similar to uh, parks but no parking can cost you an easy easy five seconds uh, each time for a, for a missed checkpoint. But the rest of the run's pretty simple. Just a, a drive down the straightaway. Nice conservative break through there. You saw I almost lost control. I actually carried more speed through that corner than uh, than I normally would. I think I was just trying to get the sub 44-45. Couldn't quite do it. 44-45.61. Overall, I think um, a 44-03 uh, or like in the 44 to 44-10 is possible, but good luck doing that. Uh, I think that'll be uh, it uh, for my attempts on the all circuits uh, for now. But uh, it, if anyone else wants to have the opportunity to to try using Nilaki's new route um, or to find any additional strategies, um, it's it's always nice to see the progression um, of of the categories in this game and uh, and, and to see more speedrunners attacking it. So without further ado, I think that'll be it for this uh, video, and I'll catch you next time.